16th Annual Shoe Memorial. Um, this event was started 16 years ago by Pat Kellen, um, who was a victim of domestic violence. And this event is to raise awareness. It's held today on December 6th, the Day of Remembrance and Action on Violence Against Women. And we appreciate everybody who's come out today. Um, all these shoes are donated. And at the end of the day, they're all sent to women's shelters and, you know, to go, go to a good cause. They make their statement and then we send them off to a good cause. We've got a few speakers here today. And the first one is Captain Jonathan Gormick of the Vancouver Fire Department. It's, uh, it's a huge honor to be here and it's very humbling. Uh, this, is, this is my second year here and it's, uh, I have to be honest, I always struggle with, with what I can provide. Uh, especially when I'm in front of a group that's been so impacted by gender-based violence, that has had their lives changed by gender-based violence, and I feel like I, I struggle to bring uh, a meaningful perspective to this. Uh, but what I spoke about last year when I was, again, honored to be here, was uh, I was explaining this day to my two young children and it was difficult to explain to them why gender-based violence is such an issue, why specifically violence against women is such an issue, and to get people who were young and naive uh, to understand that that's how things were in the past, how they were accepted and how they were swept under the rug. And it was, it was embarrassing as an adult to explain to them uh, that that's the way the world had been. Um, and you know, thinking about today, on one hand, looking back, I would love for us to have a future where we didn't have to explain to kids about gender-based violence and violence against women. Uh, that would be fantastic. But the other half of that is that what we need to do is talk about it. And what I really appreciate is everyone that's here today that's been impacted by it, that's put effort into organizing it, that's put the effort into being here or speaking here, is talking about something that's ugly, that we don't like to talk about, um, that's extremely impactful, that's embarrassing for many people to talk about, um, but it's certainly not going to go away if we don't talk about it. And uh, I just, I'm, I'm humbled and honored to be in the presence of people who come forward and are bringing awareness to something that is difficult and ugly for us to talk about. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. I also forgot to mention that um, Pat Cowan, the one who started this, um, passed away a couple years ago, and we're you know out here trying to carry carry on. And now there is um, shoe memorials pretty much across Canada now, you know. And so we're trying to carry on her legacy. And her husband John is is still here, you know in a lower capacity but he wants to come out and you know be here to support this still so you know thank you John um, our next speaker is well we have two is Sara and Dawn from the Atira Women's um, Resource Society and they're just going to give a little talk on what they do My name is Sara and I work for Tira Women's Resource Society. We work on a daily basis with women who are impacted by violence and abuse. Our transition houses and safe houses provide a safe place for the women to protect themselves and their children from violence and abuse. I see the impacts every day, how much it matters if the women's shoes are placed here or not. By providing the support and the services at Tira, we ensure that everybody has a safe place to go to. 
About myself, I'm currently raising two of my teenagers, a 13-year-old daughter and my 16-year-old son. I can say how important those conversations is. I am proud to say that my son is a feminist and he would like the same things for his, for her, her, his sister as much as he would like for anyone else. I, I want to make sure that we are aware that though it could be anybody's child, it could be my child, it could be your child, it could be one of the women, every life matters. And I would like to pass the microphone now to Dawn to share a little bit more about us. Thank you so much. Hi there, my name's Dawn and I'm also from the Atira Women's Resource Society. Uh, like Sara said, um, we work with women who are impacted by violence. Their children are impacted by violence. There's uh, some names on there that uh, I think have come through our organization. Unfortunately, um, they're no longer with us. These shoes represent so much to us and the women we serve. The women we serve will be able to use these shoes and in memory of the women who do not walk in them anymore. Um, I actually looked over there and um, in looking at the names, found a, f a friend of mine who's on there from 2009. I was very humbled to see her name there and for her to be honored because it means so much to our friends, my family, and those of us who knew her. She was a mother and she will not be here to raise her daughter um, because she was the victim of violence and ultimately a homicide and for her name to be up there. I'm truly grateful that she's been honored and um, that, sorry, that she still lives on in spirit even though her life was cut and lost so, so young and a short life. So thank you all so much for your donation of the shoes, for coming out, for supporting this cause it's so important that we try to end violence against women. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker is Nicola Bartel from Mercy Canada. Great, thank you, and thank you everyone for taking the time to stop by and pause and just reflect and acknowledge the value in life of every woman here in British Columbia that has lost her life. Um, it's a privilege, first time I've, I've had the privilege of coming today, but um, I'm part of a program in South Surrey that is free to young women, 19 to 28, that are struggling with behavioral mental health issues, much of which is the result of witnessing or experiencing violent crimes or a variety of abuses. If I can just share with you a few statistics, more than 51% of Canadian women will endure at least one episode of physical or sexual violence in their lifetime. It will happen again to more than 60% of them. Girls and young women between the ages of 15 to 24 are the most likely victims of sexual assault. One in four girls has been sexually abused by the time they are 18. 93 percent of trafficked victims in Canada are Canadian. Studies estimate that there are hundreds and thousands of victims of sex trafficking in Canada every year. Runaways are often picked up by traffickers within 24 hours and the lower mainland here is the hub of sex trafficking in British Columbia. We're a holistic program that is raising the voice of those who have lost their voice and teaching them their value and worth holistically, mind, body and spirit. And we're here today volunteering our staff and um, 
people in our community have collected shoes to bring today and we just want to raise the voice to say that every woman matters and every life that is lost is a part of a big puzzle that is missing she was intended to fulfill a life that she was wired and gifted and she's the only one that could could fulfill that part of life and so we're missing that piece of beauty that she had to offer and so thank you for acknowledging that she mattered that we valued her life and thank you for the support that you give to the myriad of programs that are in the Lower Mainland and across Canada, because by talking about it is acknowledging that this is existing. And so thank you for being here today and for sharing your part. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Um, now our next speaker is Melanie Kirkland and Melanie's going to touch on this a little more but Melanie found her birth mother through our our memorial. So Melanie Good afternoon. My name is Melanie Kirkland. I'm from the Simcoe Nation. My birth mother's name is Selma Janice Pete. She was murdered on December 3rd, 2004 in Kamloops. The two men that murdered her, they got off on acquittal. They now live in Vancouver. I lay shoes and a flower every year for the last four years here at the Shoe Memorial. Pat and John were the first two to ever console me about my birth mother. Violence happens every day. It could be happening to someone you know right now. If someone reaches out to you, make sure you, you, you talk to them. This year is a lot different for me from last year's memorial because this year I met with the RCP and the coroners in regards to my birth mother's murder. Our justice system is backwards and it's not working for us. <laughs> I speak today because I think that we need to be told about this. We need to be aware that violence does happen daily. Maybe not to us, but someone else. I thank everyone for coming out today and for the other speakers and to the UFC local, UFCW local who took over and to John and to Pat. I don't know what more to say this year because this year it's been a lot harder for me because I've been dealing with the grief of my mother's death. Something I haven't done yet until this past year was to focus on it and face it and start to heal. I heard a lady saying earlier, she's here in the audience, that she knew a name on the, on the list. My heart goes out to her. She's here now listening. Violence is something that we don't, you know, it's still kind of a stigma. We still look the other way to it, and we shouldn't. Women, men, we shouldn't look the other way to it. It's, it's got to stop at some point, and that starts with us. For Thelma, I'll, you know, she's looking down at me today, and I know she's proud of me. But this happens all the time and it's continuing to happen. Thelma, this year I can say she's one of the murdering, missing and murdered Indigenous women. That's something new I didn't add last year. Because that's something only now that I've started to realize.
Thank you so much. So that's it for our speakers today, but hopefully, you know, you guys can take something from this and go forward, talk to your children, you know, let's stop this now. Let's not raise another generation of this. Thank you.